Origins of Orlando Evans. And we're set to start the Class 5A championship game. Kick will be short. Hits at the 17. Bounces around. And finally, they try to fall on it. Did they get possession? Who's got the ball? Miami Southridge recovers the kickoff as Orlando Evans, as we have seen in some of the other championship games, just stood around and let it bounce. It's a chip shot type of kickoff that bounces backwards, has a reverse English on it. You see Brown right there, number seven, is hesitant about going for the football and gives it up to Southridge. What a big turnover to start the championship ball game. Fake into the line. That's Laurie and Mallory. He'll run with it. Mallory out of bounds at the 15 is brought down well out of bounds by Alanda Sims, the offense for Miami Southridge. Chuck Collins, the lead man in the center of that offensive line. Collins, 6'3", 205 pounder, and there's Brandon Armstrong, the tight end. He can be quite a threat for Southridge. He's caught half the passes that Miami Southridge has completed this season. He's made 25 receptions. They have a couple of good running backs with Roscoe Ferguson and Randy McRae. Ferguson starts. McRae actually has more yardage. What a great opportunity for Mallory here and the Spartans as we start this championship battle. We've got a reverse going. That's Demond Davis. Davis cuts it back inside, but is spun to the ground on a nice open field tackle for Orlando Evans by Kennard Lang. Kennard Lang was all by himself. If he hadn't made the tackle, that would have been a Southridge touchdown. They come up with a reverse, the trick play on the first possession. The front for the Orlando Evans Trojans, Avarice Holman, number 10, an inside linebacker. Very aggressive defender. And in the backfield, you just saw Kennard Lang, number 82. He'll make a lot of tackles from his linebacker spot. Third down, they need six. Mallory throws, and that ball is caught around the three-yard line. First and goal for Orlando Evans. The officials really never did decide, but it is a completed pass to Randy McRae. First and goal, Miami Southridge at the Orlando Evans three. Mallory really zips the ball into McRae, number one, who runs a short little flag route near the corner of the end zone right there. First and goal at the three. Oh, Second man oh. is Roscoe Ferguson. He loses yardage again. Kennard Lang. We heard that explosion all the way up here. Kennard Lang is 6'5", 220. We talked about the 235. Excuse me. We talked about the size and power of Orlando Evans, and it was very evident right there as Lang made the big hit in the backfield. Rolling right, throws, he's got his man, touchdown Southridge. Dwayman Preston is in the end zone. The free safety for Orlando Evans just was not able to get over in coverage in time to cover Jermon Preston. Lane Spearing, the kicker, to try the extra point to make it a 7-0 ball game. And he does. So Miami Southridge under head coach Don Solinger take advantage of a colossal mistake by Evans on the opening kickoff and drive in quickly for the score. There you see the fake to Cooper, the big fullback. Preston all alone in the flat, the safety. Haynes again not able to get over there. Charles Dorsey, the corner on that side, also unable to, to cover. Southridge up 7-0. This is how they got here. A win over Miami Senior by 27 points. Then two very tough games, very defensive-minded football teams. 
North Miami and Vero Beach by scores of 7-0 and 17-6. For Orlando Evans, they're used to seeing points on the board. 35-20 over Tampa Lato. A great game against Sarasota Riverview in Sarasota. Evans was down 13 with about three and a half minutes to go. Scored two touchdowns to tie and then a touchdown in overtime for the win. And then they advanced with a win over last year's 4A champ, Buholtz. Evans on the return. Mario Sims gets up to about the 20 where he is knocked down. And that'll be first down for Evans as they'll go on offense. Bill Gerke, the head coach at Orlando Evans, his team 12 and 1 on the year. Coach Gerke with the headset on right there, facing the sidelines as his team trails unexpectedly early in this ballgame. Sean Mingo, number five, the quarterback for Evans. They go right to the fullback, right up the gut. Barreling into the secondary, Mike Gray, and he picks up about seven yards. The starting lineup for Orlando Evans. On that massive offensive line, Vince McCoy, the younger brother of University of Florida defensive tackle Tony McCoy, Curtis Manning, Perlin Blaze, two juniors on the left side that are going to be only getting bigger, one would assume. Mike, McGre Mike Gray, the fullback, over 1,000 yards, 1,200 plus, in fact. Another running play and an uh, Orlando Evans first down as Glenn Cunningham carried across the 30-yard line. For Southridge on defense, Clifford Lee, the big responsibility falls on Lee's shoulders to try to slow down the offensive line surge of Orlando Evans. He's a 270-pound nose guard. Lamont Green, a standout linebacker. They have another one. Lamont Green and Otis Wilson, both excellent players. You'll see them a lot throughout the contest. Uh, Lamont Green, only a sophomore. Uh, big career ahead of that young man. Outstanding linebacker as a 10th grader. From the 31-yard line, first and 10 for Evans. As you see, Sean Mingo's stats on the year. Second man through, Mike Gray. And Gray gets about two, maybe three before he's driven back by the entire Southridge defense led by Errol Leandre. There's Don Solinger. Coached at Miami Southridge, left the program for a number of years to be on Jimmy Johnson's staff at the University of Miami, now in his second year back. Yeah, he's excited about uh, the program that he has a chance to lead at Southridge. Uh, as you mentioned, he had been the coach there before. Uh, did a great job with Jimmy Johnson in the program at Miami. Got back into high school football, and now he's in a state championship battle. We asked Don about the comparison, playing for a state title when he was with Miami, and they played for a national title. This is a Super Bowl of high school football as far as I'm concerned. I think you know, I've recruited all around the country, and I think Florida has as good a football as anywhere around. And uh, when you're playing for the Florida State Championship, you're playing for the best in high school football, and it's exciting. I'm excited for the kids, and, uh, you know, it's about the same. I think... Uh, it's not quite as big time, but it's still it's still right there. It's one of, it's a great throw. Flag was thrown on the snap. And we'll see which side violated the neutral zone. It'll be Evans. You know what's nice about having a coach like Don Sollinger lead the program as we look at our officials here tonight. Joe Brito lead, leading the the crew as referee. Don Solinger has been in the big time, and he's won a national championship. And when he comes to lead a program, the kids have instant credibility in what he is telling them. And uh, that's a big asset for him as he came back into this high school program. Second down and long for Evans. They'll run a draw play. Lots of running room for Gray. Gray to the 45, up to the 48-yard line where he picks up a first down. Big Mike Gray with over 1,200 yards rushing for the Trojans this season. Gigantic hole by that gigantic offensive line. Look at the big guys up front just overpowering the Spartans and untouched in the secondary goes Gray. Finally, it was Stewart, excuse me, Larry. Stewart making the tackle. 20 yards on the carry. Another run up the middle. 
This is Cunningham, and he rips through the middle of the Southridge defense for 11 yards, and another Orlando Evans first down, and these are the types of drives that Don Sollinger was worried about. Look at the yards per carry right there of Glenn Cunningham, 7.6 yards per carry. Cunningham had 88 yards on just nine carries in their semifinal win over Gainesville Buholtz. From the 41, first and 10, Orlando Evans trailing 7-0. Cunningham gets it and is hit behind the line of scrimmage and dragged down at about the 43, 44 yard line. Jamie Carr in there defensively along with Lamont Green. One of the things uh, the kids from Southridge have to do is out quick Evans at the line of scrimmage and Jamie Carr certainly did it right there as you look at the young man who shot the gap to make the tackle. Balls at the 44, it'll be second down and 13. Mingo looking right side, overthrown, intended for Jackson Reeves. And it'll bring up a third down and long situation for the Trojans of Orlando Evans. Checking into the lineup now for Evans. Number five, Sean Mingo. You saw him run over to the sidelines, get a play from Coach Gerke, and then run back in. Hey, uh, Coach Bill Gerke knows the passing game. He had a wide receiver named Horace Copeland just a few years ago. Horace Copeland, a big star on that Miami Hurricane team this season. Mingo looking deep. He's got a man, Dorsey, up there. They fight for the ball. No one gets it. Shannon Stewart, the free safety for Southridge, was there. Dorsey fought him for it, and neither one came away with it, and it's fourth down. Yeah, it was a toss-up. Uh, Shannon Stewart doing an excellent job fighting off Dorsey's attempted catch. Sean Mingo really gets the ball up, hoping that Dorsey can outleap the defender, Stewart, but uh, doesn't get it done. Stewart back to receive the punt. Kennard Lang will punt it. The lefty hits a good one, makes the catch at the 15-yard line, and that is where Southridge will go to work offensively. The first time they started, they were at the Evans 18. Now they'll be at their own 15 following a 30-yard punt by Kennard Lang. 7-0, Miami Southridge on top, 6.09 to go, opening quarter of the Florida Class 5A state championship game. These are the big boys. These are the biggest high schools in the state of Florida, and we certainly got some of the biggest players in the high school programs around the state on the field this evening here in Gainesville. On first down, they go with the tailback. That's McCray. McCray breaks to the outside, 30, 35, 40. He'll be run out of bounds at the 46-yard line, but Randy McCray picks up 31 yards for Miami Southridge. Number one for the Trojans, Maurice Haynes finally catches up with number one for the Spartans, Randy McCray, the tailback, just on the cutback, watching deep in the eye, starts to his left, then he'll break away from the tackle attempt right there. That was Lang missing the tackle near the line of scrimmage. From the 46-yard line, they give it to the fullback, Greg Cooper, and he gets about four, right up to the midfield stripe. Miami Southridge up 7-0. The Spartans want to prove they belong here. They have talked so much about the size of Evan. <laughs> Clock running, 5.25, opening quarter. Mallory rolling out, looks to throw, it's picked off. Mario Sims, the flag is thrown as Sims returns to the 44-yard line for Evans. Well, check out the flag, but it's definitely on the run back, and Evans will have the football. Yeah, it's after the interception is made by Mario Sims. Of Orlando Evans, that's the kind of... 
defense. Coach Bill Gerke wanted to see out of his ball club, get that ball away from Southridge as often as possible, and excellent coverage in the secondary makes it happen right there. The indication is a clip against Evans on the return, which will move the ball all the way back near the 20-yard line, which is where Evans will have to start. So they lose a lot of field position. They would have been at the 45. The clip Clipping. was seen at the 36. Offense after and change they move the ball. First All the way back to the 21-yard line. Let's take another look. Mario Sims, number nine, is going to come up with this interception of Mallory's pass. Mallory running to his left, trying to throw back a little bit, it seemed, across his body. That might have been the clip right there, but Sims has the big turnover for the Evans Trojans. Right inside with Mike Gray. Gray gets about two, maybe three. Look at the gang tackling. Look at the swarming defense right there. There was at least six or seven uh, black hats on that tackle right there. That's their only hope. Swarm speed, team speed, overcome that size advantage that Evans has. And it is quite a size advantage as we've talked about. Manning, McCoy both over 300. Blaze goes 290. Jeremy DeFrancisco in the 270s. Blackman, the center, is only 205. On second down, Cunningham tries to pick his way through traffic, gets two more. It'll bring up third down and a long six for Orlando Evans as we near the four-minute mark to go in the opening quarter of the Class 5A state title game. There's Lamont Green. Miami Southridge, good linebacker, just a sophomore. They think he's going to be a tremendous player when his high school career is over. Marvin Jones type of potential. Mingo gets outside containment, looks to throw deep. He does, and that ball is intercepted. Taken away by Shannon Stewart, who breaks away from a tackler. Stewart on the run, up to midfield and down at the 46-yard line. Nick Connell made the tackle on Shannon Stewart. But Miami Southridge has the ball back in Orlando Evans' territory. Sean Mingo really unwisely just throws this ball up for grabs. There are two Spartan defenders in coverage right there. You see Shannon Stewart making the interception. He's almost going to be brought down. But he shakes loose and gets into Evans' territory with that interception run. Quick hitch is completed to Dwayman Preston, and he picks up about four or five yards. Got a nice downfield block by his wideout while the ball was in the air. No flag thrown. And it'll bring up second down and about six at the 41-yard line of Evans. Already down to 240 to go in the opening quarter. Sure, Coach Bill Gerke of Evans didn't expect to see so much of this ball game played in his territory on his side of the 50-yard line. Randy McRae almost got through. Kennard Lang got a hand on him and held onto his shoes until he went down at the 37-yard line. It'll be third down in a yard. You see some significant line splits there, Larry, in the hope of spreading out some of that big beef that Evans puts on that front line. Sometimes you use that as a countermeasure when you're out manned or out weighed up front. You tighten things up, you just get those big shoulder pads closer together, and you don't want to do that. Third and one, and picking up the first down is Roscoe Ferguson. Conversely, when Evans has the ball, you'll see their splits are extremely tight because they have the big beef up front, and, and uh, they don't want to create gaps in their offensive line. First and ten, just inside the 35-yard line. There you see Ferguson with 11 touchdowns, 4.8 a carry. As I mentioned, he starts, although McRae has more yardage and a much better yard per carry average. Mallory fakes, looking deep. to throw right side. It's deflected and incomplete. 
Almost interception number two for Mario Sims, but it went off his hands. Pass intended for Brian Skinner. Mallory on the sprint out to the wide side of the field. It's a runner pass option. He tries to get the ball to Skinner. He has a bit of a opportunity, he thinks, but uh, leaping Trojan defender. That was Sims, I think, number nine. Knocks the ball away as we look at head coach Don Sollinger along the sideline. On second down, Preston and Davis both split out to the right. They have Ferguson in the slot right. And they go at the quick inside handoff. Not much running room for Cooper, and he's dropped after a very short gain. Maybe a yard and a half, that's it. A look at the Trojan defense. 49, Dewan Bell. 57, Robert Ricks there in your screen. 56, Robert Payne, a defensive end. Evans defense. Posted five shutouts in the regular season. Again with people spread all over the field. Mallory back to throw. He'll be sacked. Getting there quickly on the rush. I believe that's Robert Payne, a defensive end. A little shaken up after the play, but he's back up there. And he got the sack back to the 40-yard line. Yeah, he overpowers the tight end, Brandon Armstrong, who was assigned the blocking responsibility on the quarterback's right side. Armstrong's just overpowered quickly by Payne, and, and he gets the big sack of uh, Mallory. And they're set to punt on fourth down. Robeson. Uh, that's Spearing, rather. Spearing to punt. They have a little fake going. They'll run a little wingback type of play and a lot of running room down the left sideline inside the 15. Shannon Stewart is out of bounds and around the five-yard line. A 35-yard pickup. A little razzle-dazzle from Don Solinger. The Trojans of Evans lose the football. They think it is a punt. They don't see the excellent fake by the punter and the handoff to Stewart along the sideline. Now, at this point, the Trojan defense has no idea where the football is, and by the time they start reacting, Stewart has so much speed, you see him trying to turn on the Jets right there before the defense can recover. That was the final play of the first quarter of the Florida Class 5A High School Championship game as Shannon... Stewart ran it all the way down to the five-yard line, and Miami Southridge will have first and goal at the Evans Five, leading 7-0 when we return to Gainesville right after. Cannot get away from the defender. Is thrown to the ground. There's a flag. He must have used the face mask to make the tackle. That was Charles Dorsey on the tackle for Orlando Evans. Dorsey is protesting. I don't know that he grabbed the mask. Obviously, the officials have a much better view than we do, but Dorsey seemed to just grab the shoulder pads and throw him down. It's oh, offense. maybe it was the stiff arm against Dorsey. Let's see if it's the stiff arm by Mallory. Yeah, there it is. It's the quarterback with his stiff arm attempt that grabs a face mask. Great call by the officials, but really an unwise decision by Mallory to... Next pass, offense. 15, we play first down. Mallory trying to get away with that, and obviously he penalizes his team. Great job in the truck, guys. Perfect view of that face mask. And a great job by Dorsey, the cornerback, number two, Charles Dorsey. He was not to be denied, wasn't about to let Mallory get outside of containment there. First and goal from the 20. You don't see that very often. Skinner and Davis split out to the left side. McCray in a slot right, encroachment by Avoris Holman. And that'll move the ball down to the... No! Southridge moved. Holman thought he jumped. As soon as the flag was thrown, he kind of waved his arms in disgust and turned around and started walking back toward the goal line. Dead ball. False start. Offense. First down. He might have been drawn offside, but he didn't know that at the time. Wiggins number 52. 
the right guard. I don't know. You have the right to move your left hand, but not your right hand that's on the ground. That one will be intercepted. Maurice Haynes going down the right sideline is knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line. And Evans, faced with first and goal, backed up to its five, has stopped Miami from adding to its lead. Maurice Haynes has done an excellent job this evening in this ball game in the defensive backfield. This time, Mallory again throws the ball right into coverage. Look at the three green Evans defenders in that area. Haynes, the guy that picks it off. So Evans will go on offense from the 34. Second man is Cunningham. Cunningham up to the 40-yard line. Someone got an arm on him at the 35 and was just dragged along for the ride. Otis Wilson, the linebacker, the passenger on Cunningham for that play. Officially a gain of six. Second down and a short four from the 40. Sean Mingo at quarterback. The fullback. Mike Gray close to a first down. Might be a little shy at the 43-yard line. Let's see where they spot it. It'll be third down and short. Bill Gerke's only lost this season to Apopka, which is coached by his brother Chip. So the battle of Gerke went to Apopka, but I guess Bill uh, Gerke and Evans won the war because the title, and they're here playing for a state championship. The fullback got stuffed, still on his feet, still churning, and let's see where he got back to, the 41. The loss of two yards as Gray was met in the backfield, but Evans is going to have to punt on fourth down. Clifford Lee making the stop, the big nose guard for Miami Southridge. Look how low Mingo gets down behind the center, and there's the big nose guard Lee just doing a beautiful job initially, and finally it's that swarming uh, defense that gets it done along the sideline. There's Kennard Lang. Back to receive Shannon Stewart. Mishandled and then blocked. And Southridge will have it at the 30-yard line. Brian King, the first man there for Miami Southridge, as the punter, Kennard Lang, simply dropped the snap. Yeah, it's a good snap, but it's a little off. Well, it's a little slow. It's like a knuckleball. And the left foot kicked right into King as he was coming from the right direction, walked right into the foot and the football. Another mistake for Orlando Evans. They've had a punt block. They allowed a fake punt to be successful. They failed to even field the opening kickoff. Running left side, Cooper, the fullback. It's down to the 25-yard line, given five. Critically important for Southridge to take advantage of these opportunities. They did on one occasion, but... They really need to get points as they can against this big, powerful Trojan team. And right now, they've got another fantastic opportunity as a result of that block punt. You can't waste opportunities like this in championship uh, competitions. Inside nine minutes to go, first half. Second down at five. It's Cooper again. He gets about three, maybe, maybe inside the 22-yard line. And that'll bring up third down. Avoris Holman made the stop. Greg Cooper uh, is listed at 215. That's a load for a fullback at any level. Southridge checks. Dwaymon Preston back into the lineup. On 
third down. They just barely got the snap off before the clock ran out and powering his way for a first down, Randy McCray. Looked like he'd be stopped shy of the 20 and he just drove to the 19. Now Randy McCray truly a small back at 145, but he really get a, gave a big effort right there. And it looks like they did in fact pick up that first down inside the 20 now. Some of the fans for the Miami Southridge Spartans here in Gainesville, Florida, Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. First and 10 at the 19-yard line. Evans. With Mallory on the keeper. Mallory inside the 15 and is knocked down at about the 9-yard line. Pickup of almost 10 yards for Lorian Mallory. Mallory had intentions of running that one all along as he quickly made the fake and then got <laughs> side as fast as he could. You see that hit along the sideline there? These guys are going after each other big time. Last time Southridge had first and goal, they committed a personal foul. It was not a first down. It's second down and short here, very close to a first and goal situation for the Spartans. And another penalty. False start on the left side of the offensive line, James Wiggins. Well, that play looked like it was uh, confused from the beginning. So a couple of players lined up in the wrong position. The quarterback had to talk to him. The lineman got a bit antsy up front, forgot to snap count. How does that Dead thing ball. work? There you go. Ball start. <laughs> Offense, second down. Big bad hit Wiggins right in the face mask there. <laughs> You'd have to throw a flag on himself if he did that. There's a big hole up the middle inside the five. First and goal, Roscoe Ferguson. Flag on the play. Thrown deep in the backfield. I think that's a flag. That's just a bare spot. <laughs> Yeah, evidently no flag at all. Roscoe Ferguson protecting that ball with both hands, but there was no one to to touch him until he's near the goal line. Just a tremendous effort at the point of attack. McCray back in at tailback on first and goal. McCray drilled at the four-yard line. Knifing in quickly, Kennard Lang to make a big defensive play for Evans. Well, I was looking at the formation, the power eye, thinking they were just going to blast the ball into the end zone, but Lang was the guy that did the blasting. He shot the gap. He shot the inside gap of his defender, was hardly even scraped and made the big hit in the backfield. Of course, Lang, the young man that just had his punt blocked a few moments ago. Timeout called by Southridge. I think this is kind of... A reaction to their last series when they got down close, Jim. They don't want to let another opportunity go by. They're up 7 nothing. They know they should have more. Oh, they really need to get on the board. Uh, Evans is the favorite in this ball game, but uh, Southridge again feels that they've been underrated all year long, have something to prove in this championship battle, and they need a 14 to, to zip lead if at all possible. Certainly, they want to get three points on the board. Don Solinger, the head coach at Miami Southridge. On your left, on the right, Bill Gerke of Orlando Evans. These guys have a mutual admiration society, and Bill Gerke talks about that. Hey, uh, the, the coach at Miami Southridge, Don Solinger, is probably one of my closest friends in the coaching community, and uh, I've known Don a long time, and I know he'll have his kids ready to play. They got great team speed. And uh, they're very well coached in every phase of the game, and uh, that's why they're here. Bill Gerke's defense again stops Solinger's offense. It'll be third down and goal inside the three-yard line. McCray in as the tailback. Cooper's the fullback. Kind of that power eye look with Dwaymon Preston. Option left side, cutting it in, Mallory, he won't get there. He gets to about the two, and that's it. Evans denies once again. And now Don Solinger's got a decision, and he wants three points. He's sending Spearing in. What a great goal line stand by the Trojans of 
Orlando Evans right here. On the outside, the Spartans trying to fake up the middle. Get outside with the quarterback and the potential pitch to Preston, the, the wing back right there. But Evans was not to be denied. Swarms to the football. Keeps Southridge from getting another six. Here they go for the field goal. Spearing to kick out of the hold of Shannon Stewart. It's blocked. In the end zone, they fall on it for Evans. It's a touchback, and Orlando Evans, for the second consecutive time, sees Southridge get first and goal and does not let Southridge score. I thought it was Sam Jackson, number 25. I'm not sure on the number. It looked like the defender coming from the outside to the left of the kicker was able to get there and make the block. Let's see if we can pick it up. Look to the left of your screen. No, it's right up the middle. The ball was actually kicked rather low, and the three or four Trojans were leaping in the air. Everest Holman, number 10, looked like he might have got his arm on it. But once again, what happens to Southridge? They don't capitalize on a terrific opportunity. Consecutive first and goals, one at the five, the other inside the two. No points out of either one. They go with the fullback. Gray bounces off two tackles and fights back to the line of scrimmage. And in there defensively for Miami Southridge, Brian King. You know, it's amazing that Evans was able to make that stand right there. As Southridge was moving the ball, as a neutral observer, I'm sitting here and I'd already conceded the touchdown because Southridge was really blowing off the line of scrimmage. And then all of a sudden, Evans makes a great stand and then blocks the field goal attempt. No gain on the play. Second down for Evans. They go with the tailback. That's Haney, Sean Haney. Fights his way across the 25-yard line. Otis Wilson in on the tackle. What Evans has to do is quit dodging bullets and shoot some cannon shots of their own. They really need to start taking over control of this game if, if they expect to uh, get on the board, get... Southridge's attention. Southridge has just had control of this game from the outset as a result of many problems that Evans has had giving up the football. Mingo falls down. Just tripped, kind of lost control of the ball and had to protect it. And it's a loss back to the 17-yard line. And Orlando Evans, which had a nice run on one drive, where they got down to about the 30 before they were backed up. Since then, they've looked very much out of sync offensively, confused at times, and they're not getting the kind of blocking they need to have. And they got absolutely nothing done on that possession. Here comes Lang. Hopefully, he's expecting a, a better snap. He doesn't get a better snap. He's going to have to fall on it for a safety. That's a flag. You can't bat a loose ball. The official signaled safety, but I believe my Southridge may have the option of getting the ball near the goal line. You cannot bat a loose ball, and let's see what the ruling will be from the officials. What are you supposed to do? Run it out of the end zone? You have to have possession. You can't bat a loose ball. They're talking it over with the Southridge. Yeah, looks like he's explaining the option to them. Coach Sollinger saying, hey, what's the situation? Here we go. Illegal batting, offense, decline, safety. They decline it, they get two points plus the football, so I guess that penalty would have been half the distance and then fourth down again because Evans was the last team in possession of the football. Mr. Rogers, the principal at Miami Southridge, Bob Birdside, the athletic director. Their team is now up 9-0 thanks to a second consecutive bad snap. The ball just never gets back to Lang. He's desperately willing the ball get to him, but it, it doesn't on two occasions. And there you see the bat out of the end zone. I guess he felt like he wasn't 
going to be able to take possession of it and protect it and didn't want to give up a touchdown. So he was thinking, he was doing what he thought was best, and as it turned out, he Pro didn't hurt his ball club. Probably was the best bet. You have the right to punt the ball or place kick the ball. They'll punt it, a driving kick by Kennard Lang, fielded by Shannon Stewart at the 28. Stewart coming up the right side will be tackled at the 44-yard line. So a 16-yard return for Shannon Stewart. And it'll be first down for Miami Southridge. And you know that Mr. Lang is going to have a talk with his snapper because those snaps have really hurt Orlando Evans in this ball game. In fact, the kicking game overall is hurt. A flag was thrown on the play against Southridge. So they'll move the ball back from the 44-yard line, probably back to the 29. Might have been a block below the waist. <coughs> Clipping, receiving team during the return. First down. So the ball will be back on the 29-yard line where Southridge will go to work offensively. 2.50 to go in the first half of this 5A championship game. Miami Southridge up 9-0, and Orlando Evans at this point has to be grateful they're still in this game. And they're grateful that even though they gave up two points, at least they backed Southridge up a little bit inside their own 30. Southridge could have had the ball out near that 50-yard line. On first down, McCray with a big hole. He gets up to the 39 and close to a first down. Alanda Sims makes the tackle for Evans. But a pickup of almost 10 yards for Randy McCray, who's a little bit shaken up down on the field. Randy McCray, the deep back in the I formation. Mallory almost walks the ball back to him about four yards deep in the backfield so he can increase his lines of vision so possibly he can make a cut back or two and he really took a brutal hit right there very violent game football the way these young men play it they measure for the first down and McCray is just an eyelash shy of first down yardage Bill Gerke, the head coach at Orlando Evans, his team is 12 and 1 on the season. I asked him, why is your team playing for the state title? Been asked that question a million times this week, and uh, I, I think it's basically three things. Number one, we're one of the only schools in our area of the state where the people that are on my staff have all been with me for 8, 10, 12, 15 years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, makes a, it makes a whole lot of difference in high school when you work with the same guys every year. They do a great job getting their players ready to play, and uh, that's probably one of our biggest pluses the last five years. Second of all, on, during the season, we had some real young players and didn't have anybody get hurt almost the entire year. In fact, we've had more get hurt in the playoffs than we had probably the whole year long. And probably the third thing is the fact that because I've been there a number of years and, and, and uh, most of my coaches have, We've gotten to the point where we're working on the second, third brothers, and uh, the, you know, the, the players in our community don't have a lot of things, maybe material things, but they love to play. And they got a real deep concern for each other, and win or lose tonight, I know they'll play their hearts out. 2.15 to go in the first half, 9 nothing Southridge, and they're driving first and 10 at the Evans 49. There's Ferguson. He gets a yard and pays for it dearly. He's racked up. Chande Brown making the hit, number seven, a weak side linebacker. Robert Ricks, also the defensive tackle, number 57, coming down the line of scrimmage, fighting off the blockers and getting outside to make that hit. Give him a yard at second down. Rolling out to his left, throws the ball incomplete. Intended for Bra for uh, the tight end, Brandon Armstrong. <laughs> Had to squeeze it in among some defenders and couldn't quite do it. Evans has eight defenders crowding that line of scrimmage, trying to shut down Southridge as they run the ball. Southridge trying to cross them up a little bit and throw the football. Five down linemen, two linebackers, and a safety inching up toward the line of scrimmage. 
now a third and nine play with a minute 28 to go in the half. Three receivers on the right side. One of them, McCray, is a slot back. Mallory rolling that way. Throws back to the middle of the field and completes a pass at the 35-yard line. That's his tight end. Armstrong with his 30th catch of the season. And it's first down at the 35-yard line with 121 to go in the half. Charles Dorsey is doing a great job of coverage, but Brandon Armstrong makes a super catch for the first down. Mallory really drilled that one in there. That was just a great effort by the young tight end. First down and 10. Mallory again. Rosu and the tight end is really hit as Mario Sims couldn't wait to get there. They come right back to Armstrong, who's dragged across from the left side of the formation. You see Mallory looking back. Oh, but Sims was there as well. You could tell he heard footsteps as he reached for that ball. 102 to go in the half. Southridge still with two timeouts. Faced with second and 10 outside the 35. 9 nothing ball game. Mallory incomplete, broken up by Holman. They ask for a flag on the Southridge sideline, don't get one. Armstrong, the intended receiver, but Avoris Holman broke it up. Southridge once again moving the ball with some success in the middle of the field, but Facing a third down and 10 right now if they hope to keep this drive alive. And we continue to mention the fact that they need to take advantage of every opportunity they have. All out blitz. Mallory runs away from it. He's inside the 30 and will run out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Shy of a first down. Lorian Mallory had a lot of running room, but he ran out of room shy of first down yardage by about two yards. Now Solinger has to decide if Spearing can kick one from 44 yards or if they're going to go for it on fourth and a couple. They'll use up a timeout with 48 seconds to go here in the first half. Coming up at halftime, a conversation with Jimmy Ray Stevens, the coach of the 4A state champ, Fort Walton Beach, a very impressive performance by them earlier today. We'll also have first half statistics and highlights. And the highlights probably will not be highlights to the snapper from Orlando Evans, who's had a very difficult first half. Got a little gator thing there. Got to be courageous to wear those gator emblems down in Miami these days. Don Solinger talking it over with his offense. What are they going to do here on fourth down? A little bit less than two yards. They don't quite have to make it to the 25-yard line. They will go for it with 48 seconds left in the opening half. 9-0 Southridge over Orlando Evans. Yeah, you got to agree with this call. Uh, they're the underdog. They've got a 9 to nothing lead. There's only 48 seconds left in the half. Why not go for it? On fourth down, second back Ferguson. Lots of running room as he gets down to the 17-yard line. Roscoe Ferguson had all kinds of room in the middle of that line of scrimmage. They continue to have success in the open field. They look so impressive. One, two, sometimes three plays in a row, but the last time they got near the end zone, Evans just shut them down. So let's see what they can do now with only 38 seconds left in the half. Mallory fakes it. Rolling right, throwing, it's intercepted. Mario Sims with his second interception of the opening half. And he returns it out to the 20-yard line. And for the fourth time, Miami Southridge gets close and has only one offensive score to show for it as Evans thwarts another Southridge drive. Wasted opportunity. Lorian Mallory just throws the ball into coverage. 
tries to force it in there, make something happen. There's too many white jerseys and green helmets over there on that side of the field. See, he dropped the ball as he lunged toward the 20, bounced up nicely for him. And now timeout is signaled, having been called by both teams. The referee says Evans called it, and the back judge says Southridge. Whoever is charged with the timeout, it doesn't matter much. With the ball on the 20 and 18 seconds to go, it seems unlikely that Evans would try to do much with this one. Holiday sports action continues right here on Sports Channel with the Palm Beach Classic Basketball Tournament, Friday, December 7th, 27th, and Sunday the 29th, beginning at 6 o'clock. On Friday, you can see Penn State take, uh, taking on George Washington, followed by Marshall against the Miami Hurricanes. Then on Sunday night, the consolation game followed by the championship game. The Palm Beach Classic right here on Sports Channel. So Evans breaks the huddle. 18 seconds left in the half. Two receivers split out wide. Ingo steps back, now he'll run with it. He's got five, breaks toward the outside, and has run out of bounds at about the 30. Got close to first down yardage, but used up eight seconds to do it. But he did stop the clock, and perhaps there's a miracle along the sideline there as he talks to one of his coaches getting a play with only 10 seconds to go. They probably need to pick up 20 seconds in, or 20 point yards in about eight seconds or so. Uh, if you want to try one of those Hail Mary passes, you need to be within the 50 yard mark. Otherwise, most quarterbacks just can't throw it far enough. Mingo pumps once. Now throws to the outside, overthrown. Pass was intended for Nick Connell. The Spartan cut. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, D. That's, that's Errol Leandre. Go defense. Defensive tackle. He's used to being out there at times like this. But he's getting a breather. The ball at the 30-yard line with now four seconds left in the half. Mingo in trouble, spun around and spun to the ground at the 21-yard line by Jamie Carr. And that will be the final play of the first half of the Florida Class 5A state championship game. Miami Southridge dominating the entire... Orlando Evans, welcome back to our halftime. And Jim Yarbrough, for Orlando Evans, a team that has been so strong offensively, and we talked about their big offensive line, their offense hasn't even been there. They haven't been a factor when they've had the ball. Absolutely so, Larry. They've got nothing done on offense. Can you believe 33 yards in total offense? None passing, 33 yards rushing. That would be a good offensive production for your first series of the game, but not for the whole half. Uh, the Spartans of Southridge have just done a great job shutting down those that big beef and that big running game that the Trojans have. 145 yards rushing the football for Miami Southridge. If you told Don Solinger he'd be outrunning Evans 4-1 to one at halftime, he'd be a very happy man. Scoring summary, the pass from Mallory to Preston put the first seven points on the board for Miami Southridge, and then they ended a safety on a bad snap. But keep in mind, Southridge twice had first and goal and did not score a single point. And, and on another possession, they were intercepted at the 10-yard line of Orlando Evans. So they certainly feel like they should have more points on the board right now. But here at halftime in the 5A championship game, it is a 9-0 ball game in favor of Miami Southridge. In the other state championship games, let's championship game, Miami Southridge leading Orlando Evans 9-0, and Jim Yarbrough, the things went wrong from Orlando Evans' perspective right after the coin toss. They won it, and then they tried to receive the opening kick. On the opening kickoff, you'll see Chandis Brown, number seven, reluctantly go after this high kick. The ball actually has reverse action on it. As it hits the ground, you see number two, Dorsey, right there, apprehensive about covering it, and who gets it? The guy, guys in the black shirts. That recovery at the 18 led to this touchdown pass as...
Mallory rolls out to his right and finds Preston for a short touchdown. Well, the Spartans do take advantage of this big opportunity uh, as a result of that turnover, but it's the missed opportunities that uh, really have prevented them from increasing uh, their margin uh, of lead here in the first half. After failing on a couple of occasions to convert first and goal, another bad snap to Kennard Lang, the punter for Evans. You would never expect this in a state championship uh, battle. Evans just continues to shoot themselves in the foot here. Uh, the ball is knocked out of bounds. They give up the safety, and that's why they trail 9 to nothing at halftime. And with the score 9 nothing, Evans found themselves backed into their own territory defensively again. But Mario Sims played a big part in Evans' defense in the first half, and here he makes his second interception. Mario Sims, number 9, does a great job from the corner. You see... Mallory trying to force the football in here, uh, a wasted opportunity on Southridge's uh, side. There you go with Sims and the interception. At least they did not give up additional points to the Spartans. See, the ball came out, but bounced right back to him. The only lucky bounce of the first half for Orlando Evans. We'll be back with the second half of the Florida Class 5A championship game right after these words. Orlando Evans, but they've held Evans to only 33 yards of total offense in the first half. Before the game, we asked him what he would have to do to have success against that offensive line of Evans. We're just going to have to swarm the football and keep getting after them and uh, trying to keep their big plays to a minimum. I mean, uh, their backs are bigger than our line. You know? So it's, it's going to be tough, but you know, we faced some big teams down in Miami to get, get here, and uh, Miami High was real big, and uh, a few of the teams we faced in North Miami was pretty big. And uh, we're just going to have to swarm them, get after them uh, defensively, and try to keep their big plays to a minimum. Sollinger's team will get the football first here in the third quarter. Remember, Evans had that opening kickoff and did not even field it. And that was the play of the first half. Remains the biggest play of this game. But if Evans is able to get back into this game, then Southridge will have to look at those two first and goal opportunities where they didn't get as much as a field goal out of one, not even an attempt, because they ended up turning it over and the second time a field goal was blocked. It would be especially frustrating for them because they have moved the ball with success in the middle of the field, but when they had those additional opportunities to get some significant points, they weren't able to get it done. You see some of the Evans fans as Evans gets set to kick off. That's Matt Moore, and he basically kicks short pop flies when he kicks off. I don't know if that's because Evans is not comfortable with their ability to cover kicks, but he generally does not kick the ball deep and does not kick the ball in a way that it can be returned. Well, he's certainly not going to take a running start. He's going to take two steps. Bouncing kickoff, loose ball, who's going to fall on it? Apparently Southridge got it. Evans had a great shot to get that ball. It was bouncing around, but coming up with it for Miami Southridge was Lamont Green, number 45. So Southridge gets a break there as they almost let the kickoff be recovered by the kicking team like Evans had. Well, Matt Moore did a great job of pooching it in the air. You see the ball take the crazy hop right there. Evans had a great opportunity. Charles Dorsey kind of waves at it, but it's not able to come up with a fumble recovery, or place kick recovery. Southridge starts at its own 40-yard line, leading 9-0 with good field position. Second man through, the tailback, that's Ferguson. He gets about three, maybe four, up to the 44-yard line. Kennard Lang in there on the tackle for Evans. Also in there was Shondi Brown. As you'll recall, you mentioned earlier that they trailed Sarasota Riverview by two touchdowns late in the fourth quarter and were able to tie that one up and win it in overtime, so uh, they're not unaccustomed to trailing an opponent in the playoff battles. So even though the Spartans have a nine-point lead, uh, this game's really up for grabs. On second down, 
Ferguson runs through an arm tackle and then is knocked to the ground at the 47-yard line. It was the arm tackle of Robert Payne, number 56, that was not able to bring him down. Alanda Sims and Kevin Stanbury ended up making the hit. Sims, number 15, a corner, very good athlete. Six foot, 285, or 185, 285 corner. Now that would be a big defensive back. Trojans need to get their confidence back, and one way to get it back is to shut down uh, the Spartans on their first opportunity in the second half. Third down. Spartans need three. Flag on the play. Mallory is hit at the 47. The ball came loose. They're going to rule the man down, although I think Mallory got it back anyhow. Kennard Lang, 6'5", uh, 230. He's played an excellent game. He's done some punting, attempted to do some punting. The flag but he's really be, making some big hits on defense. Sorry, Jim. The flag will be an illegal shift against Evans, and, or rather against Southridge. Evans will decline it, bringing a fourth down. Decline, fourth down. Well, that should be the emotional lift that could get them going. I mean, they've done an excellent job here. Now let's see what happens as their punt return team comes out on the field, see if they can get the ball out a little bit. Back to punt, that is Steven Robson. Spearing kicked earlier, or was out there earlier. I guess he's a better ball handler on the fake punt than is Robson. The low line drive will hit at the 23, hits again. Sitting there <laughs> debating whether or not to field it, Willie Freighter, and it rolls dead at the 15 yard line. Oh, he just wanted to touch that football, but luckily he did not do it. And so Evans will go on offense at its own 15-yard line. Sean Mingo, number five, in the first half. 0 for 4, one of them intercepted. Here's a guy who has thrown for 1,754 yards, even though they only average throwing 11 times a ball game. Now, they're not strangers to the passing game. Again, Coach Bill Gerke is an excellent coach, has coached the passing game before. They're just not uh, executing tonight. Pitches to Sean Haney, and Haney picks up four to the 19-yard line. Tackle for Southridge by Otis Wilson. We'll bring up second down and six. Early going third quarter of the Class 5A title game. There's Mike Sharpiro, the defensive coordinator for Miami Southridge. Yeah, they're extremely proud of the type of kid that they have to coach. Mingo on second down in trouble, steps away from it, throws in and out of the hands of Jackson Reeds. Was that, right there, a little behind him, but he should have caught it. Yeah, he thought he had it. He thought he had it and was about to run away with it, but uh, again, he didn't make the catch first. And Clifford Lee, the nose guard who's playing an excellent game, put the pressure on Mingo, watch the nose guard, 54. Oh, Mingo just is able to dance away, and then he sees the open receiver, Reeves. Reeves says, okay, I'm gonna catch it, but nope, doesn't get it done. Shannon Stewart in coverage. Big third down for Evans. As they try to get something established offensively. Mingo fakes, plenty of protection throws. High, nice leaping catch is made by Nick Connell in the middle of the field, and Evans has a first down, 20 yards on Mingo's first completion of the night. Nick Connell is a senior, 5'8", 150, makes the grab of the evening, and certainly as far as uh, the Evans Trojans are concerned, a leaping, diving catch. Big play and a big first down. Ball at the 39-yard line. There's a draw play to the big fullback, Gray. Gray to midfield, still running. Gray inside the 40, continues to drive to the 38 before he's pushed back. But Mike Gray running up the gut for 23 yards, and that's enough to encourage Tony McCoy, an Orlando Evans alumnus, standout defensive tackle on the number three-ranked Florida Gator defense. Watch Shannon Stewart come up and try and make the tackle on Gray right here. Watch 28 come out of the secondary. He says, all right, nope. <laughs> That's a big fullback. A lot of 
power. Mike Gray. There's Haney. Oh, just a step from getting it to the outside, but Otis Wilson tripped him up at the 35. Give Haney three yards, it'll be second down and seven. Ball at the 35-yard line. Evans on this drive with more yardage than they had in the entire first half of the ball game. Yeah, only 33 yards. We mentioned that's generally a half a drive for them, much less half a ball game. Pitches to Haney. Haney's knocked off his feet. Nice play by the corner. Terrence Carter coming up to take the legs out from under Haney, who had a lot of running room if he had gotten past Carter, but he couldn't do it. And it's third down for Evans. He's trying to shake off the sting of that hit. Watch 22 just come up like a bullet. Beautiful job. Outside in. He had outside position. Wasn't going to give up the containment responsibilities. Makes the big hit. Knocks the running back down, but uh, he's still got a bit of a sting. You see him still trying to shake it off right there. Third down for Evans. They run the draw play. There's Gray inside the 25. Gray inside the 20-yard line. My goodness. Mike Gray. People talk about running backs in the state of Florida. They don't mention this guy, but this is a good-looking fullback for Evans. Bargeman, number eight, makes a big hit. There's another hit by 22, Carter. Then it's 28, Stewart. And he still bulldozes forward. Gets a lot of back slaps along the sideline. 71 yards now for Gray, who gets a breather. Haney, second man through, gets about five down to the 13-yard line. Sean Haney, over 1,000 yards on the season, as is Mike Gray. This is the Evans Trojan team we expected to see early in this ball game. They're really executing that power running game right now. This is the kind of football these guys have played throughout the year and certainly in the playoffs. Second down from the 13-yard line. Two receivers split out to the left side. On the delay, Haney gets away. He's got open room to the corner of the end zone. Touchdown! John Haney, the senior, breaks the tackle of outstanding inside linebacker Lamont Green. Lamont Green makes the hit on Haney, but Haney spins away, and once he spins away, it bounces outside. It's touchdown city for the Trojans. Now with the extra point attempt, Matt Moore could make it a two-point game, and he does. Watch the broken tackle here. Lamont Green, the outstanding inside linebacker, number 45. He's going to make the hit on Haney, but he can't wrap him up. And he spins a 360, bounces outside. There's nobody there. And Evans is back in the ball game big time. Evans had 33 yards of offense in the first half. They had 85 yards in that drive, covering four minutes and 14 seconds, and that is the football team we expected to see tonight. Southridge kept them under wraps the entire first half, but now Evans right back in this, a two-point ball game, and the Southridge defense will get together and talk about what went wrong on that drive. <laughs> Looks like Evans is going to choose to kick away this time. Matt Moore a bit more of a distance away from the football. Not a very deep kick. Stewart takes it at the 15, right up the middle to the 30 of the 35-yard line. <laughs> kind of stumbled to the ground mostly on his own. 20-yard return. Alanda Sims finished him off. And Southridge will start first and 10 at its own 35-yard line, leading 9-7. It's like we talked about at the half, Jim. If Southridge were to get threatened or challenged in this game during the second half, they would have to start thinking about those opportunities. 
Well, they certainly missed a lot of them in the first half. It's going to be a tough battle for him here as Evans is standing up to the challenge. A little wing back reverse with Preston, Dwaymon Preston. Gets about three or four yards on the play. Nice open field tackle made for Evans by Alanda Smith. There you see Young Sims, Sims a I'm senior, sorry. 185. We had to wake him up for that shot. <laughs> Good morning. Has a few moms and family in the stands right there cheering their boys from Southridge on. Same play almost and a little bit less of a result for Southridge. Randy McRae on the carry and breaking up the play defensively was Kennard Lang. Now the Evans uh, defenders are back slapping each other, cheering each other on. They've gotten the uh, momentum away from Southridge. Their offense has gotten on the board finally. They've seen their offense perform as they expected it to. Very important here, I'm sure, for Southridge to give their defense a little more rest and try to sustain the ball a while. On third down, second man through, getting running room. McCray just does get the first down as he knows the ball across the 45 and then was driven backward, but that should be enough. Mario Sims on the tackle. Yeah, they're going to give him the first down, and it is a big one. As we mentioned, we see the Spartan defenders talk to their uh, coach along the sideline. The referee signaled twice first down, and Orlando coaches scream they wanted it to be measured, so they will indeed measure it. And it's not a first down by a great deal because the sticks were across the 35 also. Less than half a football, but it still counts. First down for Southridge, a big one as their defense gets a little more rest on the sidelines. 3.36 to go third quarter. Miami Southridge up on Orlando Evans, 9-7. Here you see the job McCray has done today with 52 yards on the ground. Ferguson has also chipped in. This time it's McCray trying to get through traffic. He does. To the outside, into Evans' territory and down at, out of bounds at the 41-yard line. 14 yards and a first down for Randy McCray and Miami Southridge. Mario Sims on the tackle along the sideline. As you see Randy McCray deep in the eye, the quarterback, Mallory, literally walks the ball back to him. Watch Sims come out of the right side. Going for the head a bit aggressively there. He risked a personal foul penalty, which really would have been unwise of him. Fullback, lots of running room. Cooper barrels inside the 25. Haynes and Sims on the tackle, but Greg Cooper just went right up the gut and picked up about 18 yards. Well, the Spartans of Southridge continue to play outstanding football, taking advantage of opportunities from time to time and then earning the respect of Evans by just ramming the ball right down their throat. You saw 66, David Spell, an excellent trap block on Robert Ricks to break that play open. First down at the 24. There's Cooper, and he goes for about eight yards down to the 16-yard line. So Evans had the momentum, but Southridge has come right back. But between the 20s has not been a problem at all for the folks from Miami. Yeah, now is where it really gets tough for him. The key is can they execute now that they're in that red zone, that scoring zone. There's a happy young warrior there. You see the numbers on Cooper, almost half those coming yards coming on one carry. On second and a long two. First down is picked up by Roscoe Ferguson as he gets down to the 12-yard line of Evans. They're shifting the tight end over and creating an unbalanced line toward the wide side of the field, and they seem to have an advantage in terms of numbers there after the tight end makes this shift and they're really having great success ramming that football right at the big strong Trojan defense 
see the tight end. Now on the left side of the formation, let's see. He'll stay there, and they send a receiver in motion. Breaking to the outside, not getting anywhere is Roscoe Ferguson. Shonday Brown with a good open field tackle for Evans, and it'll be no gain. Second down and 10, might have picked up half a yard. That's a big linebacker in high school, isn't it? 6'2", 210. Not at Evans. Yeah, that's true. Their kickers are bigger than that. <laughs> we'll see Roscoe Ferguson with 48 yards. McCray is up over 60. Cooper has about 40. On second down, they fake to the tailback. No, the tailback does have the ball. I thought McCray was a fake by Mallory, so he fooled me, but not the Evans defense. A gain of about three. Put the ball outside the seven-yard line. It'll bring up third down for Don Solinger's Southridge Spartans. Yeah, third and a healthy six, it seems. Once again, we talked about the problems inside the 20 when the Evans Trojans uh, have been tough to deal with. Southridge doing a great job on this drive, but can they finish it off? Big third down play with less than a minute to go. Quick pass, wide open for the touchdown, Randy McCray. Just a busted assignment in the Evans secondary. No one reacted to the wing back going out for a pass. Nobody went with him, and it was an easy touchdown. Nice play call by Don Solinger. Well, what Mallory does so well, Larry, is adjust instantly. He sees the situation, and he quickly gets the ball in the air to McCray. He made the decision very quickly after he saw that he had the advantage there because of the problems in the secondary and McCray was untouched. Now the extra point attempt for Spearing. And it is back, hit off the upright and ricocheted through. The kick is good and it is back to a nine point lead for Miami Southridge. Most impressive as the Spartans respond to the Evans touchdown with one of their own. Johnny Brown, number seven, was right in Mallory's face, but he saw McCray. He's looking at him right now. He knows what he's got to do, and he's just kind of short arms it out there before Haynes, the safety, can get over and react. It's a touchdown. Laurie and Mallory on the year had three touchdown passes. He has two tonight. And now Evans is back down by nine. And only 27 seconds remain here in the third quarter. Fielded at the 10 yard line by Mario Sin. 10 plays, 65 yards. Four minutes, 59 seconds on the clock. The pass to McCray for the touchdown. Spearing's conversion, making it a 16-7 ball game. 23 seconds left here in the third. There is an injured player on the field for Miami Southridge. Bill Gerke of Orlando Evans with that big offensive line of his, and that line finally got it going during their last possession. He talks about his big guys and that they're more than just big guys. Most of the bigger ones are underclassmen, and uh, they uh, they really have a genuine care for their role on this football team, and they have for the last six, seven years. And uh, a lot of those big guys that are playing for us now is our kids that, that we had to go out and we recruited out of the halls and uh, invited them to come out, and a big part of our success. Hey, talk about some big guys at Evans previously, huh? Scott Jocelyn, the big... Uh, Freshman red shirt here at the University of Florida, goes close to 300 pounds, and maybe Jeff, a few others. Jeff Zimmerman, yes. the University of Florida, Leon Searcy, uh, the offensive great. lineman down at Miami, Jamie Dukes. There you see some of them. Jamie Dukes, a starter for the Atlanta Falcons right now at center, had a great career at Florida State. That's a lot of beef right there. Tony McCoy, who had a terrific season for the Florida Gators at defensive tackle and only thing I can figure is there must be some very inexpensive all-you-can-eat places in the neighborhood of the Evans School District they've got some awfully big kids there one with the thumbs up holding 
holding on to his nose. Hopefully, for his sake, not broken. It's, is it they say bloodied but not bowed or whatever? It's definitely bloody. Oh, that hurts. Don't sneeze. <laughs> what hurts is the best pictures of him in the state championship game are going to be of him walking off the field holding his nose. That's what hurts. State 5A championship game, and here's Mingo pumping once, looking to go deep. He throws deep down the left sideline. That ball is caught, still on his feet. Jackson Reeves, Jackson Reeves will score. Touchdown, Evans, as they go 75 yards on one play. Jones and the safety Stewart knock each other off of coverage right here, allowing Reeves to bounce free along the sideline for the big touchdown bomb. We talked about Coach Gerke knowing the passing game because of wide receivers like Horace Copeland playing there before, and they do in fact come up with a big play, the big bomb. Extra point is good. And that makes it again a two-point ball game with six seconds left to go in the third quarter. Sean Mingo pumps and says go for it and then lets it fly. Throws it as far as he can throw it, I'm sure. Watch the... Oh, there's the bounce. The safety knocks the corner off, but the problem was the safety was behind the receiver again. You cannot let the receiver get deeper than you are if you're the safety. And there's a happy young wide receiver for... Orlando Evans. Make sure we're back, people. So after nine points in the first half of this ball game, 21 points have been scored here in the third quarter alone. The Class 5A championship game in Gainesville, Florida. Miami Southridge has led since just about the opening kickoff, but their lead is again down to two points. Moore to kick it off. Driving kick this time, and the return man falls on his back at the six-yard line. That's Coemba Jones. He should have gotten out of the way and hoped it bounced out of bounds because that's a big mistake, and Southridge has been deep. Well, Coemba Jones obviously thought he could catch the ball and keep his feet, but he was driven back so quickly because of the... Uh, depth of that kick that he lost his balance and the ball is dead right there and that will end the third quarter of the florida class 5a a state championship game 12 minutes to go to decide a champ southridge leads by two southridge starts back at its own six yard line as we start the final quarter of the 5a title game Gives off to his tailback. And Ferguson is racked up by Robert Payne after a loss of about three yards. Miami Southridge has a tradition of being a pretty darn good football program. Their third trip to the 5A title. Lost the championship game in both 83 and 84. Winston Moss among their graduates. My, how things can change at intermission. Certainly has for Orlando Evans. To go inside. Back to about the four, close to the five-yard line, and that is it. McCray on the carry. And Southridge is facing a third down and about 11 against a newly inspired Orlando Evans defense. There you see Trojan fans. Evans folks on their feet. They're excited about their team waking up in the second half here after trailing nine to zip at halftime. On third down and long, they run the option left side. Mallory is tripped up from behind. Gets up to the 10 yard line, but that will be it. Nice play by Alanda Sims. And Southridge will have to punt from deep in its own territory. 
Nick Connell and Willie Frater will be deep to return the punt of Steven Robson. And now the pressure will really fall on the Southridge defense as Evans is likely to start out in Southridge territory trailing by just two. Good kick. Letting it hit. Now fielding the ball at the 48 and being driven to the ground right there is Willie Freighter. Willie Freighter needs to learn to make better decisions returning his punts. 38-yard kick, just a two-yard return, and Evans will start at the Southridge 46. Steven Robson doing a nice job there on the punt. Boy, did you see that ball zip back to him, though? That's That was a beautiful snap. Let's see what Evans is deciding to do. Their first drive was a power drive, then they went 75 yards on the bomb. Reverse. All tangled up is Dorsey. Gets out of that mess, and he's off and running right side. Dorsey still on his feet and ends up losing only four yards on the play. He ran about 60. That play was messed up from the get-go. Charles Dorsey trying to <laughs> come around with the reverse from Mingo, but... As you mentioned, that play was just destroyed from the onset, and he's lucky to even get back to a near the line of scrimmage. And second and 14, the draw play. Gray bounces off a tackler and breaks out in the open. Big Mike Gray inside the 10, first and goal, Evans at the five. 45 yards for the big fullback from Orlando Evans. Mike Gray, excuse me, Larry, time after time bounces off. Look at this, he luckily bounces into wide open spaces. And it's finally Stewart, I believe, that runs him down from the backside. What a powerful back, Big Mike Gray. One of the most powerful backs that we've seen in these state championship battles of all classifications. Evans threatening to take its first lead of the day. To give it to Cunningham, he loses a yard. Cunningham, Dave. It's that nose tackle again. Clifford Lee on the tackle. Lee has played a fine game in the middle of the defense for Southridge. Well, tro the Trojans have from time to time had an excellent defensive effort inside their own 10-yard line. Let's see what the Spartans can do as their backs are against the wall. And now timeout will be called by Orlando Evans with 7 minutes and 59 seconds to go in the fourth quarter. Evans has not led in this game, but they have a golden opportunity here. Second and goal at the six, not as good an opportunity as first and goal at the five, but still a great chance for Evans to take their first lead of the contest. The temperatures rising as the heat go into 1992 against some of the best in the NBA. Join us on Sports Channel Sunday, January 5th, as the heat take on the Lakers in L.A. Then on Wednesday, the 8th, the Chicago Bulls will bring their championship rings to town to take on the Heat in the Miami Arena. Friday the 10th, it's the Houston Rockets in Miami. All right here on Sports Channel. Be sure to check your local listings for availability in your area. Mike Sharpiro, the defensive coordinator of Miami Southridge, and he's got to get his guys fired up. Try to keep Evans out of the end zone here. Second and goal at the six in a two-point ball game. You don't see many coaches wearing a neck brace. He's really playing the game with his kids. <laughs> He's got that towel wrapped around his neck. He's ready to hit somebody himself, it looks like. Do you see the kids in the black uniforms trying to urge their crowd on, saying, hey, stand up with us here on this goal line stand. Make the draw play, Mingo wide open, touchdown, Mike Gray. The fullback ran right through the middle of the defense and then drifted off into the flat, caught the touchdown pass. Otis Wilson, number seven, the inside linebacker, went for the run fake, 
Mike Grace slipped right by him. Mingo drops the ball in for the touchdown. Evans has called another timeout. They're up by four, and they're going to go for the two-pointer to make it a six-point advantage. Gerke talking with one of his players on the side. That's Sam Jackson, a backup running back. Mingo has completed his last three passes for 101 yards and two touchdowns after starting out 0 for 5. And here's the most important one of the evening, the one that gives them the lead finally. The run fake, beautiful execution. He's, he sees Mike Grace so wide open, he just sends him a lollipop pass, and Mike Grace says, thank you very much. Touchdown for the Trojans. Still a lot of time to go, 7.53 in this 5A championship game. Evans up by four, they want to get up six so that if Southridge scores, they still need the extra point to take the lead. The difference between a four or five point advantage isn't really all that much. Mingo in trouble, similar play, and the catch is made by Jackson Reeves. Two-point conversion is good, and the score is now in favor of the Orlando Evans Trojans, 22 to 16. And how about that score, Jim Yarbrough? Because it's the very same score that Evans won the state semifinal by. I'm so impressed, Larry, with Jackson Reeves, his ability to catch the football. He's just been outstanding this second half, especially. That's a big two-point play as they now have that six-point lead, the lead for the first time in this championship battle. And now the Southridge offense, which has played very well in moving the ball, although they've struggled in cashing in their scoring chances, will be in pr under pressure really for the first time all night long. They got an early lead in the contest that never trailed until right now. And they may think that this you have to think that this conceivably is your last possession. You ought to be able to get it back one more time. Not too many chances left in a ball game when you get inside eight minutes to go. Well, and when you're playing a, a powerful running game like Evans has displayed in the second half anyway, that's the Evans that we expected to see. And they'll pound the football at you and keep it for a significant amount of time if they can There you see, 7.53 to go. Southridge has all three of its timeouts remaining. Evans has used two of their three. Kickoff is high and taken at the 15-yard line by Jones. Jones, look left, cut back to the right, and is dropped at the 31-yard line. So that's where Southridge will go on offense following a 16-yard kickoff return. John Solinger's team will see if they can move on Evans. They need a touchdown and a kick to regain the lead, trailing Evans by six. Mallory gives it off to his tailback, McCray, and he's knocked hard to the ground by Kennard Lang along with Dewan Bell. There you see Bell, number 49, who made that tackle. I mentioned Orlando has not had a team in the state finals in more than 20 years. And here's Evans trying to bring a championship back to Central Florida as we go inside seven minutes to go in the game. the middle, lots of running room for Roscoe Ferguson up close to the 40-yard line. He'll be about a yard and a half short of the first down. Maurice Sims, or rather Maurice Haynes made the tackle. Third down and a short two. But a very important two, obviously. Six and a half minutes to go in the game. There's McCray fighting his way toward the first down sticks. He did not make it there. He stopped shy of the 41-yard line. It'll be fourth down and less than a yard for Miami Southridge. 
And now Don Sollinger has to decide. They're going to go for it. Oh, this is uh, risky business right here with just a shade under six minutes to go on your own 40-yard line. You just lost the lead for the first time in the evening. This could be catastrophic if they don't make it. Everyone's in tight. Quarterback sneak. He oh, appears to have gotten it, but not by yeah, a lot. There he goes. Now he's pitched. Well, they blew the ball dead right around the 42-yard line. You check where the side judge came in and spotted it. It's shy of the 42. They didn't have to make it to the 42. I think he's got it. But they might measure. Yep. They will measure. Gutsy call. But in the championship of the 5A division, he decides to roll the dice and go for it. He's got a lot of confidence in his young men on offense. Quarterback sneak. Oh, whoa. Oh, yes, he got it by a football. Bill Gerke and Don Solinger are good friends. He became friends as Solinger was recruiting Leon Searcy and Horace Copeland from Evans to play at Miami. And they'll be better friends in about a half hour than they are at the moment. Five and a half minutes to go in the game. Mallory on the delay, the give to Roscoe Ferguson, and he's driven back hard. Kevin Stanbury making the hit for the Evans defense. With Kennard Lang again. Lang, number 82, has made some of the biggest hits we've seen on the field all evening long. He is a gigantic hitter. He's one of those linebackers that really gets your attention because of the collisions that he creates. Not second down and nine. Wide open on the option. Mallory across midfield is dropped near the 48-yard line of Evans, shy of first down yardage. It'll bring up third down and short for Southridge as we go down to 4.45 left in this game. A beautiful job by Mallory running that option to the short side of the field right there. He had the chance to keep or make the pitch. There's the fake to Ferguson. Now he's got the option of keeping it or pitching. He'll just make the little fake pitch right there. Tries to get underneath Sims, but Sims has the strength to make the one-arm tack. On third down, Ferguson, big hole down to the 43-yard line. And it's another Southridge first down, the Spartans. Grinding it out on the Evans defense. Oh, this is exciting football right here. The Spartans of Southridge trail by six points, four, ten left in this ball game, and they're driving the football with great success right now. Ferguson hit at the line, keeps going forward for about three yards. One thing you need to remember is that they'll have four downs to make 10 yards, not three. They've already determined that they're going for anything on fourth and short. Field goal will not do them any good. So they're going to be going for it on fourth down no matter what the distance, I'll bet. So they got four opportunities to make 10 yards on this drive, not just the typical three. And it's all been on the ground. Big hole opens up, getting through traffic, still on his feet. McCray driven out of bounds at the 21-yard line. Maurice Haynes makes the stop, but a 19-yard pickup by Randy McCray brings up first down at the 21. Randy McCray so impressive out of that eye formation. Deep in the eye, look at him shake off the tackle right there. And finally, it's Haynes who has the speed to finally horse collar him out of bounds the clock stops temporarily at 317 but Southridge continues to look terrific on this drive which might take them to a championship Mallory gives it again to McCray and he goes right up the middle for another six yards it's just amazing the holes that Southridge offensive line is opening up against the Evans defense. Well, that...
split that the offensive line has taken has created a few seams in the back deep in the eye has the chance to use his vision to pick any opportunity he can and uh, they've had some seams out there for them clock was stopped for a long time some confusion i guess with the officials now they're set to go ball at the 15 yard line second down they need four for a first down you see the clock remember southridge has all three of its timeouts Much there that time as McCray gets maybe a yard. Boris Holman makes the stop as Randy McCray now has 100 yards in the ball game. The ball's been on the ground consistently on this drive. You got to believe that Evans is thinking run, run, run. Will they in fact come out with a play action pass, catch him off guard? Or will they continue to ram it down their throat, which they're doing with success right now? On third down and three, fumbled snap from center. Mallory has dropped at the 15-yard line. Oh, it looks like they had something special planned. I don't know if it was a pass or a quarterback draw. I'm not sure what their attempt was there. Mallory was, in fact, backing away from center when he lost the handle. Fourth down and four. Oh, my goodness. Now Don Solinger will signal. I thought he was signaling timeout. He is. Timeout is called by Don Solinger and the Southridge Spartans as they're faced with a fourth down and four at the 15 of Orlando Evans. The broadcast rights to tonight's telecast have been granted to Sports Channel Florida by the Florida High School Activities Association solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Sports Channel Florida is prohibited. Thank you very much. You see the guy in the white sweater in the huddle there with all those black jerseys? That's head coach Don Solinger, and he's saying, guys, this is it. This is it. Here's our play. Make it work, or it's over for us. And he's 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 saying all the same. There and what they're reminding the kids is this was why we went through two a days. This is why you lifted all those weights all summer long. This is why you got up early when all your friends were sleeping in for this play to have enough in reserve for this play, which could decide the state championship, and it could very well do that for both teams. Fourth down, they have to get to the 11 for a first down. Still two timeouts remaining for Southridge. Go, go. Naked bootleg, go, go. Mallory inside the 10, he's out of bounds at the six. They fake to the tailback, Mallory ran to the outside and got the first down. Stopping the clock with a minute 33 to go. Let's watch the coach. I don't know that the tight end was set before the ball was snapped. I, I lost track of the football. It was such an excellent fake. I lost track of the football. I was watching the tight end who had to be set in his formation before the snap. He wasn't going in motion. He was just moving to reposition himself. But uh, evidently he got there before the snap and big first down. Roscoe Ferguson down to the two yard line. There you see the clock. Now an enemy of Orlando Evans perhaps. And second down and goal. Solinger's Southridge Spartans have three more chances and they will call timeout. His maybe second we, time. Excuse me, Larry. Maybe we can get a replay of that fourth down effort that uh, Southridge pulled off so successfully. Mallory did a brilliant job of ball handling right there on the naked bootleg after he faked the ball to his tailback. Once again, Don Solinger cheerleading his team on. Solinger heads off the field. Here's that fourth down. All right, here we go with the replay. Watch Mallory. 
give the ball to the tailback and then take it away and the camera continues to follow the tailback as did most of the Trojans but it was Mallory who kept the ball moved it down near that goal line and here we go with 113 left in the ball game Southridge has done most of his offense on the ground but both touchdowns have been on pass plays down close unbalanced to the strong side the tailback does not get in the end zone it's third and goal from inside the one. It was close, but in fact, he did not get there. Evans hey, continues Kevin, to be so hey, tough hey, inside their five-yard line. Coach Gerke, look at the anxiety on his face. Coach Sollinger. Last time they had yardage this close, they just ran the quarterback. Mallory kept it behind his center. Chuck Collins, the best offensive lineman on the team. Unbalanced left again. Oh, no, motion. Oh, no. That'll be five yards on Southridge. Oh, my goodness. Was it a, it was one of the guards or tackles on that strong side, unbalanced line to the left. Oh, you cannot do that. First the emotions penalty. and intensity is so high down near the goal All line. Start. All fans. They got they jittery and down. made the quick jump before the cadence was completed. And now timeout will be called by Bill Gerke. He wants to get his defense together and talk with them and make them realize exactly what he wants them to do and what he anticipates Don Sollinger will try to do. The interesting thing is a lot of Evans' defensive philosophies were taught to Bill Gerke by Don Sollinger. Well, whatever it takes to work right now, he's praying that he can get it done as he sends out his defensive assistant to talk to the kids on the field. Sollinger himself goes out to be his own offensive coordinator here. He pulled the miracle out of the hat on fourth down earlier on the bootleg, and let's see if he can pull another one out. What Again, a great ball game. A reminder that while Southridge has moved the ball on the ground, in fact, they've run on every play on this drive, both touchdowns have come on pass plays from inside the 10-yard line. This drive started over seven minutes ago. Southridge executing brilliantly on offense all the way down near the goal line until the middle mistake on the motion offsides penalty has forced them into this third down situation. On third and goal, they're going to run the option to the wide side. The pitch is to Preston. He's collared at the two and run out of bounds. They say he's down inbounds. The clock continues to run. What an effort by Charles Dorsey, number two, who seems not be able to catch up with Dwayman Preston. But Dorsey reaches out, dives out, grabs the jersey. Here's the wing back. Preston, he's heading for the corner on the pitch. Watch Dorsey close and stretch out, grab the jersey and throw him down. Just a fantastic effort by Charles Dorsey. It's a time like this as Don Sollinger has called timeout to decide on the one play with 14 seconds left in this game. The one play with the best chance of giving his team three or four feet. They don't need a lot. They just need a yard for a chance to kick the extra point that would give them and the Larry, Class they, 5A title. They have no timeouts left, so they have to score right here. I don't think they can huddle up and run another play. It's, it's going to be over. Fourth down as well. And the officiating crew is not the one from the Missouri-Colorado game, so <laughs> getting a fifth and goal snap off is not likely. Here we go. A 5A title right here. Quarterback sneak. Oh, they're waiting to mark it. He did they're not looking. get in. They're looking. Now he did. A very late sign from one official well after the play was over. And now Southridge can try the extra point that would give them a one point lead with seven seconds left. A very late call because they weren't sure where the quarterback Mallory was underneath that pile. Waiting, waiting. What is it? What is it? What is it? Give me a touchdown. I'll take a touchdown. Yeah. 
Now the extra point for Lane Spearing. Evans jamming up in the middle. That's where they'll try to block it from. That's where they block the field goal. The kick is up and it's wide. It's wide to the right. In seven seconds, Miami Southridge and Orlando Evans will be co-champs of the Class 5A division in the state of Florida as Spearing pushed it wide to the right. comes the replay of the quarterback sneak by Mallory for the tying touchdown. He gets pushing help from his backs as well. But there are, are no tiebreakers in the championship battle. There are in the playoffs on their way here, but a tie is a tie is a tie in the championship battle. Chip Gerke talked about what kind of return if they have a special reverse or something on a kickoff return. Rather, Bill Gerke. No, it was one of Mama Gerke's boys. <laughs> to work so hard for so long to drive for that tying touchdown and then miss the extra point. Short kickoff, loose ball. Fallen on and down at the 32-yard line with five seconds to go. That's basically one play. And 68 yards. Now, we saw one long touchdown pass, but I don't know if they could pull that off again. What a drive. 17 plays, 69 yards, seven-plus minutes on the clock. The clock starts. Remember, after a change of possession in high school, they won't even get a snap-off. Bill Gerke and Don Solinger close friends for a number of years will share the 5A state championship for 1991. Confusion on the sideline in college and in the pros, they do not start the clock after a change of possession until the next snap. In high school, they start it as soon as they're ready. Neither one of them wanted to share the title, but there's something appropriate about it when you look over the course of this football game. Orlando Evans, Miami Southridge share the 5A championship. One, two the team that's Joe Lewis another senior offensive lineman and those guys who just shared a state title and the guys from Orlando a little more happy about it because Southridge missed the extra point with seven seconds to go but keep in mind Evans had a lead didn't get to see the ball for the last seven and a half minutes of this game as the clock painfully wound down on them they felt they had a great shot at a title it was a late signal because of the pile up on the touchdown to begin with. Neither team is too thrilled about it now, but you know what, Jim Yarbrough, when the rings come in from the company they order them from, they will say the word champion. And that's nice, even if there is a couple of letters in front of it. Yeah, these both of these teams have a lot to be proud of. What a great ball game uh, right down to the wire. Uh, Southridge had control early throughout the first half Evans comes back big time in the third quarter and then in the fourth quarter it was give and take all the way right down to the end Stu Rogers one of the assistants at Miami Southridge an alumnus of the school down there and it's just such an empty feeling for everyone right now there you go take a couple of those magnetic football men put a little buttercream icing on them and they'll have a good time the rest of the day Orlando Evans and Miami Southridge, quite a ball game, and they end up sharing the Class 5A state championship. So let's take a look at all of our state champs for 1991 in the state of Florida. In Class 1A, Jacksonville University Christian and Coach Robbie Pruitt, a winner over Fort Lauderdale Westminster Academy. Pruitt's third title in five years, the fourth title 
in the history of University Christian's program. In Class 2A, it's Don Johnson and Madison Jefferson County, the fifth state title for Jefferson County, who, uh, interestingly enough, Jefferson County was involved in the last tie for a state championship. They tied with Cluiston in 1972. In Class 3A, Alachua Santa Fe from just a few miles up the road from here in Gainesville. A 41-7 win over Haines City, the first state title in school history. They lost the state final 22 years back. And in 4A, a very impressive performance by quarterback Danny Werfel and Fort Walton Beach as they defeated St. Thomas Aquinas 39-14. Again, the champions, Larry Bishop, the coach of the 3A champs, and Jimmy Ray Stevens of the 4A champs. And here in 5A, one of those trophies was engraved champion and the other was engraved runner-up. So one of them has to go back to the engraver, if not both of them. But in Class 5A, Miami Southridge drives a long way for a tying touchdown and then misses the extra point. But Jim Yarbrough, that drive, reminiscent of so many great drives you can think about, like the Denver Broncos when they beat the Cleveland Browns and such. Just a very impressive performance by Southridge to tie this game. Over seven minutes they controlled that football and just rammed it right down the throat of the big, strong Evans Trojan defense and did everything they could to be a champion. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, every kid on that field is certainly a state champion tonight. Well, we appreciate you joining us for all of the Florida High School football championship action here from Ben Hill Griffin Stadium at Florida Field in Gainesville. I'm Larry Vitell saying so long for Jim Yarbrough, our entire Sports Channel crew that did such a great job both weekends. Thanks to each and every one of you for all your efforts, and thanks to you for watching Florida High School Championship action. The final score in the Class 5A game, Orlando Evans and Miami Southridge are co-champs at 22-22. Good night from Gainesville.